Tennessee. I mean, sorry, Tennessee, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, it's close to Nashville. I'm like 90 minutes away from Nashville. Okay. So, okay. yeah. That's like the, that's, I heard that's like the best. Oh, hey, we're going live. Okay. Yeah, we're live. That's okay. <laughs> I was just talking about how Paul is from the bachelorette capital of the world, apparently, Nashville. Really? I didn't apparently, know that. That is the destination. It's surpassing well, Vegas as a place am... where women that are about to get married, <laughs> they go there and have their, their bachelorette parties. They wow. get a whole anyway. You don't know this? <laughs> no, I don't know this. <laughs> well, okay, now you know. You taught me something about Nashville. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a big problem. They go bar hopping and sort of tear up downtown Nashville uh, quite a bit, apparently. That's what they well, do. I have seen some of that in Nashville, so it, it makes sense. Okay. So. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, if you're just joining us, this is yes, Paula Soapbox Love. <laughs> <laughs> you will undoubtedly recognize my guest tonight for his role on As the World Turns as Henry Coleman. Mm -hmm. He has also been popping up on General Hospital as Huxley Lynch. And he is here tonight to talk about his new film, The F. Mm -hmm. I am so excited to yeah. welcome to the show three-time Emmy nominee, Trent Dawson. Thank you so much. And thank you. You did your research. <laughs> I did my research. I tried to do my research. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so, I'm very happy to be here. Very happy to be here. Is that your kids? <laughs> can, I, can you say hello real yeah, quick? Absolutely. I would love that. Can you say hello to Paul and tell her that we're... Say hi. 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 <laughs> What's your name? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's going to take him away. Sorry about that. I no, knew this, okay. this is right around bedtime for the older ones. So right. Yeah. No, that's that's. <laughs> Quite all right. Most of the time, my, my most interesting interviews are the ones where somebody has to answer the door or a child comes in the room or, you know, I've yeah. even had people cooking dinner during an interview. So uh, it's it's cool. That's all <laughs> I'm not at all that. upset about we're, that sort of the, thing. We're in the middle of potty training. So I'm always keeping like just an eye out just in case, right. you know, a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you never know. <laughs> never no. When he gets really quiet and goes into the corner, then you're like, okay, he's it's happening right now, isn't it? Right. <laughs> Get him to the toilet stat. <laughs> but when any toddler goes quiet in your home, it's always usually a bad thing. Something's yeah. gone wrong. Yeah, absolutely it is. <laughs> my, my cousin has a toddler and uh she was in in the tub one night and everything got quiet and oh, no. he had dumped a bunch of uh like the, the pudding mix. Oh, oh, all over the floor, <laughs> all over the countertops. I think it was like a whole box full. I don't know if it was like in envelopes and he just uh, opened the envelopes, but it was like, it but did, was a, but did they end up with like a tub full of pudding, which would be awesome. Did they, pretty much because they had to put him in the tub after that and hose him down. So oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Fortunate. No, 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 nothing like that. We've had poops. Why are we talking about poops? I don't know. <laughs> in the to the tubby that's always fun <laughs> <laughs> well i knew this was going to be a fun interview and we haven't even started yet so. right, right on my bowel movements i don't know how it happened right, i know i don't know how that happened <laughs> it's like i'm back on set it as the world turns it's all we talk yeah well speaking of that yes. it's a nice, really nice segue somehow yeah from poops to as the world turns i don't know how that worked out but it worked out anyway totally does <laughs> So your role as Henry, it was only supposed to be like a short thing. Right. And the fans really liked your character. So at least initially they, they helped you stick around, right? They did. They made, they had made a huge impact. And I got this feedback from um, the powers that be at world turns that the fans were really supportive. Um, you'd get it in like the, uh, the magazine, the soap opera digest and things like this. They'd say things like we're getting a lot of mail about, about this character. But, and then the main thing was the writers too. Um, they loved writing for him. And I also, I also made a point of saying every single word that they wrote, which not everybody did. And, and I understand why I don't criticize people that change scripts or anything right. like that. But you were verbatim. So well, I did it verbatim because I thought that's my job. I don't, I don't write, you know, they don't pay me to write. They pay me to make these words come, you know, do these words. So um, I did it. And of course the writers watched the show. So yeah. when they saw that I was doing every single thing that they had written, they were like, I'm going to really write really well for him because he's not just cutting <laughs> things that I happen to maybe are very precious to me. Yeah. Um, and that, I think that also helped 
it helped inspire them to write some really great stuff because a lot of, I mean, he had some really fun stuff to say. It wasn't just like me going out there and twirling dishes in the air. They gave me some fun stuff to say. And I think yeah. it's because they knew I would say it. <laughs> you know? yeah. So yeah. That's a really good strategy though, to get more storyline. You know, I, I didn't think it was a strategy at the time. I thought of it just as like protocol, like, uh, but right. yeah, they're the writers or the actor. I think by the time they brought Vienna on and, and, and Eva and I had like a sort of instant connection. Um, it, she just brought on all of this, like Eva energy, this Norwegian model energy. And I was like, right. <laughs> I was like I'm going to make, I'm going to make this last because there's some kind of connection happening here and we should, we should figure out a way. And by that point I was figuring out, well, if I, if I maneuver like this a little bit, the writers might catch it and might pick up on it and might try to like make that story go further. But that was like years yeah. in. It took me years to figure that out. Up until that yeah. point, whatever they gave me, I was like, yes, sir, I, I got it. Uh, this is what you want me to right. say, I'll say it. <laughs> so. <laughs> so did it surprise you that the fans were really like responded the way that they did to your character? It, it, it did. I never really had anything like that before. And, and I wasn't, right. and this is pre, I started when people were still writing letters. This is like late nineties. Yeah. So that was very, and I prefer that. It was so lovely. It was so lovely yeah. to get a letter. You know what I, I mean? Know. It took the time. Yeah. A letter. Um, and I just love that. And, and, and I didn't know how to respond to it. And then I would go to events like Martha Byrne had the St. Jude's uh, benefit in New York, um, or you go to the Emmys or stuff like this and you'd meet fans. And I didn't just know how to, I didn't grasp until really towards the end how generational the show was that people, yeah. most people come up and say, instead of, hi, I'm so-and-so, or, or it's nice to meet you, the first words out of their mouth is, I was watching this with my grandma when I was a kid. Exactly. And yeah. I didn't I didn't grasp how big that was in people's lives, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it, and, and, and I do now. Now I'm like, I mean, I was part of something really special. Um, so it, was, it, was, it wasn't uncomfortable. It was just strange. I didn't know how to react. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and you know, you hadn't you had never done a soap before as the world turns, right? I popped on to, to guiding light for like a day and yeah. and, and that was it. So no, I'd never done anything like this before. And yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It was it was interesting. And and I think the fans get a, they got like a sort of a bad rap and, and I and part of that's just from movies and things like that. I always had such a great time with them and we have great events. And then when the internet came along, they were able to form their own sort of clubs together. Yeah. And then when they would meet at events like a Martha Byrne event or something, they were there as much to meet each other as they were to see us. Yeah. So, like they became friends with someone in Minnesota and Ontario and Louisiana. They could all get together and meet in New York or wherever the event was. And and that sort of took the pressure off us a little bit too. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, it's not just about us, thank God. Yeah. Um, but I found the fans to be so pleasant. I, it, it, there are some shows out there that fans are just like nuts. And I never found that with World Turns. I found it was just br br like wonderful people who really appreciated the show. Can you say goodbye yeah. one more time, please? Bye. Ah, bye, -bye. bye. Thank, you <laughs> Thank you for being on my show. <laughs> yes, your first interview, Jack. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully his last. We don't need any. Yeah. Anyway, you don't. You don't want any no, more performers I, in the family. <laughs> no, I, I need a. I need a doctor or a really good doctor. That's it. No. <laughs> anyway. So, is it surprised you that the the fans have have uh, stuck with you this long after World Turns ended, like through all of your other projects? Yeah, it 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 it, it does. Um, I, I guess it. I guess it does. But it goes back to that generational thing. If you sort of grew up with it, like. Now, I mean, the show's, that show's been off the air for a while, but now I'm meeting people who really were kids when I was on the show. Yeah. And they're, they're recognizing me, and that's a whole different experience um, than meeting sort of the adults that were adult fans when, when I was on it. Because, um, you know, I forget I was in people's lives five days a week, typically. Right, it's yeah. Towards the end. Um, and so uh, the whole Barbara storyline, really, they, they, they really – milked everything they could out of that. And that was a blast. But um, yeah, I, I guess I am kind of surprised, but you know, I, I'm fans of stuff. I have my yeah. things that I'm fans of, my television shows, my stars, my things like that. And I'm, I'll, whatever they do, I'll watch them. I'll watch them. It doesn't matter what they're, you know, if they're, they show up in town, I'll go see them speak, you know? So I, yeah. I get it. I totally get it. I'm a fan. I'm a total fanboy of something. So 
if William Shatner from Star Trek showed up, I'm there. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I think anybody's there if William Shatner yeah. shows up. Yeah. I don't think he he doesn't have anybody who's not a fan, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, as Henry, you got to do a lot of fun things on the show, uh, a lot of crazy things on the show. You're looking at me so, like it's a euphemism, like fun's a euphemism, like, you no. know. <laughs> Now I'm in it at all. <laughs> I was just thinking, is there something that um, you didn't get to do as Henry that you wish you could have done before the show ended? <laughs> wow, I've never been asked that question. Um, <laughs> a sword fight. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen we had okay. a <laughs> we had a great stunt coordinator for World Turns. He did all the fifty cuss stuff, and I knew him. It was a guy named Rick Swordlay. And I used to be really involved in all that stage combat stuff, you know, yeah. and when I was much younger. And uh, he's so skilled, but you know, all they ever got to do was like a punch here or a punch there. And I was like, I wish you could have done like a, I don't know why Henry would be in some all out brawl, but you know, just some massive f fight with swords and daggers and, or, you know, I think that would be a lot. Of, it's that so unusual. Funny. <laughs> he was fun to play because I was usually bigger than just about anybody I was because I'm six two. So I sort yeah. of I sort of towered over everybody but like Paul Layden. I think he's about the only person my height. And um and and so but I was always sort of getting kowtowed and, and beaten up and knocked around and punched and pushed over and things like this. So it would have been fun if he just suddenly turned around and started wailing on something. <laughs> you know, just a good question. I've never asked that's, that. That's an idea. Because <laughs> they, because I, I, I asked for like some kind of romantic interest. I didn't actually I didn't ask for that. I, I was having fun playing sort of both sides of the of the of the sandbox, if you know what I mean. Because they, yeah. they didn't really sort of clarify where Henry was at. Yeah, and so I wondered about that for a long time too. I and, asked and then, early on. I asked early yeah. on because it seemed like I was like, oh, okay. And then the executive producer said, no, don't don't play that. But you know. <laughs> And I was like, okay, that's fine. But they kept writing stuff that I was like, am I hitting on Holden right now? Because I feel like I'm <laughs> Holden. Uh, and, and I remember look, seeing scenes where I was like, I wonder, I don't know. Yeah. And they had a bunch with Mark Collier too that were, uh, you yeah. know, I started talking about his tool belt and it just, <laughs> it was just, you know. And so I, and I had fun with it. I had a, a total fun with it. And then they had me fall in love with Katie, which was perfect, but in a way also kind of took away that kind of, uh, that fun mystery and that I had yeah, this the ambiguity, uh, right? Yeah, and they did that, and then they gave me a mother, which I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually, they made me related to like half the town. Uh, yeah, by the end of it. So I can't think of anything else. Like I could, I got everything I could have possibly wanted. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I know that you and Colleen Zink wanted to have a storyline together. So luckily, that happened before the show ended. We we did. You know, we did. We talked about it for years. Um, yeah. She, uh, she, she, and I talk theater all the time. She's a great song and dance gal, you know what I mean. Yeah. And she wanted to do something, and I didn't know they were going to go with a love interest, which ended up being fantastic. Yeah, I, I thought they were going to be like partners in crime or do something really snarky or conniving. Um, and then when they made it this whole love interest, I it was a total trip, and she, she was totally game. She just dove right in. Yeah, uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I interviewed her last year and, and she had nothing but great things to say about you and that storyline. Oh, so it, it was a lot of fun to go through that and, and hear her talk about it too. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> left, left poor uh, Vienna out in the cold. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's the heart it's, wants what it wants. <laughs> it, yeah. It was, I think it was a great pairing and, you know, honestly, if there was a way to like work out the licensing of the characters, I would, I would love to see like a web series spinoff of Barbara and Henry. I think your, that would be hilarious. Your mouth, to God's ears. I, I don't know who to talk to about that. Uh, yeah, because there's, there's, there's also this kind of like um, uh, Nick and Nora. This kind of like uh, the Thin Man series. They kind of did that with me and 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 my little sister Maddie on the show. You can you can go out there and get involved in all kinds of really bizarre. Both Henry and 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 Barbara could get involved in all kinds of bizarre actions, um, I, I, borderline criminal, if you know what I'm saying. Borderline and also, criminal. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think he'd ever kill anybody, but it, well, no. just shy. Of it. Um, but but steal, <laughs> yes. 
Um, and then, <laughs> or you could flip it around. You could have it like a private eye. You know, you could go out and you stop in the bad guys, but and then yeah. have that sort of that f fiery romance going at the same time would be. Yeah. I think it'd be a total trip. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Well, I've tried I'll, to ask. I'll, I'll pitch. I'm sorry, it. go ahead. Yeah. I'll pitch. Yes. Yes. Fine. Yes. We'll listen. I'll, I'll pitch you. I think that would be great, and I think the fans would love it. I think they would too. I think they yeah. would. I still get stuck. Yeah, I still get people asking about that. So yeah. why not? Why not give it a shot? See if people would fly. I yeah, know. I would love that. Everyone okay. would love that. <laughs> and I've tried to ask this of everybody that I've interviewed from World Turns because I was a fan of the show for a long time. It was one of those things where, like, like you said, I grew up watching it with my grandmother and with my yeah. mother, and you know, it's totally generational uh, did you get to keep anything from your time on the show yes in fact there's one this object right behind me oh okay <laughs> that's so funny that you say that yeah my wife did this this um this is one of those globes you know, yeah down and it's a globe and, and there's like wine bottle decanters and things in it um and i think it was in the lakeview lounge for forever um and uh, okay he, he, lots of pictures um, a lot of Henry clothes. This is funny because that's cool. Well, it is cool, but the last couple of years I was there, they suddenly decided to give Henry a, a wardrobe budget because up to that point, I just had some regular suits, and they went yeah. out and bought this stuff that I just loved. But I really thought I could pull it off in real life, and I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's the the amount of colors and paisley and and color and. <laughs> <just> <laughs> So over the top. It's like it's like London circa 1967. <laughs> and and um, I can't I can't pull it off. And so so <laughs> in my closet, beautiful clothes, but I right. I, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to auction them off or sell them or something like that because I can't. Yeah, I was gonna say if you can't wear them and you don't have room for them, then you might have to auction them off or something. But I would hate to do no, that. No, no. And now that <laughs> I, now that I'm a dad, it's just kind of like I can't see myself on that. I mean, I don't have to go with the other extreme, just walk around in sweats all the time. But that's <laughs> yeah, you know, that's highfalutin. It's it really <laughs> it's impressive. It's impressive clothing, but uh, too impressive for me. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> now that you're not Henry anymore, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> well, you did the web series Wait with Martha Byrne. I did, yeah. So was that your only uh, experience with doing a web series? Y yeah, it was. And and oh. and I was, uh, yeah, it was. And I got the call out of the blue. Martha said, you want to come out and play um, this guy that they, uh, oh gosh, who's the? Jason Lighthouse. Jason Lighthouse. Yeah, was, there you go. The next <laughs> character. But he was loosely based on Ron Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm old and 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 uh, a dad. Ryan Seacrest, <laughs> um, but it was sort of like the the dark evil like twin of Ryan Seacrest. So right, yeah. He was cynical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was very surprised when I said, "Why don't you come be a part of this?" And I read it and I said, "Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's do this. This looks like fun." Um, and that's the first time I ever did that. Yeah, and it was fun. It was, a, it was a blast. We were like on a rooftop in downtown Los Angeles filming. It was, you know, you felt you were in Hollywood. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, I mean, in that that character, I think thought you played that perfectly. I thought that was just okay. it was. You were perfect for that role. <laughs> it just, I don't know. There was just something about it. It was like that role was tailor made for you. Well, I wish it con it continued because he was. I fun. did too. I yeah, like terrorizing children like that. That was a lot. Yeah, <laughs> always fun. <laughs> Right, like the worst, most awful theater parent, yeah. <laughs> yeah. stage mom. Yeah. Well, I guess your first—I um, don't know if this was your first professional gig, but I think it was your first on-screen gig as an actor was in Steel Magnolias, right? Yeah, yeah. Because um, they shot it in Louisiana, where I'm from, right. and um, in a little town called Natchitoches, and they needed a choir. And uh, and you can see me in there for you know a good hot second. Yeah, um, me and uh, we're so cute and adorable. We're all like 18, 17. <laughs> yeah, and we're dressed like an like a Dickens novel. Um, and I think it's where I think it's where they announce that she's pregnant. Like that that Christmas scene. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? You remember yeah. the film? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of like drama going on, but we were just sat back there singing. But the point is, we didn't know when we were going to have to show up and record our voices. And they took us out of school and, mm -hmm. and one day and said, whoever's available, come record and we're going to film it. Well, only about a handful of us were available and our choir teacher wasn't there. So we just had to sing by ourselves. So guess who comes up into the little room where we're recording to listen to us and to encourage us, but Dolly Parton. 
Oh, wow. It was, I got the sweetest, like every, everything about Dolly that you want to be true about Dolly is true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard that. And, and she was like, y'all sound so good. <laughs> we did we did, if you listen really closely, we're off. We're out of tune. <laughs> wasn't there. We do not sound good, but she didn't care. She encouraged us. Um, yeah. So that was, that was the first, yeah, that was the first experience. It was a big movie and you had all these big, Famous people, Olympia Dukakis, and all these people running yeah, around. Yeah, and it's a classic but, now. And it's a classic. I yeah. know. Well, the writer was from that little town, Natchitoches, Louisiana. He was from there, and he had written, a, I guess, the play there. And yeah. uh, and boy, Hollywood picked it up and ran with it. And it is, yeah. it is. It's 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 a traditional film for a lot of people, the way like Wizard of Oz is now, or Love Actually, or you know, yeah. film like this. for a lot of people, it's that little heart, you know, heart place for them. But so that's yeah. a nice thing to be a part of. It, yeah, really. Yeah, I mean, even if it's a small part, you yeah. know, hey, you were in Steel Magnolias. I was so. in Magnolias. Hey. Yeah. Hey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, just lost my train of thought. Um. Still oh, well, had you already <laughs> had you already uh, been actively pursuing a career in the entertainment industry when you did that film? No, I was still in high school. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we were all in high school um, there, and uh, and I had been doing you know drama and theater in, in high school. Uh, yeah. I didn't think that I could, and I'd been doing it most of my life, um, but I didn't think about necessarily doing it as a career. And then I tried to do something else in college, and it didn't. And I was like, I can't. I, I got to go back to this, and so it became my passion. So then I got a degree in it, and then and then just moved to New York and just rolled the dice and and uh, did what everyone else does: hit the pavement. Yeah. yeah, it's been a trip. So tell me about meeting Emma Thompson when you did Men in Black 3. Oh, no. Why? Why did that? Do? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that embarrassing? <laughs> yes, because. Um, because. Um, uh, you talking about fans, right? And fans being. Are you still there? I lost you. Can you hear me at all now? Can okay. you see me at all? I see it. Okay, good. So, um, one of the questions I got asked from like Soap Opera Digest or Soaps and Death over the course of years that I was on World Turns was, "Who's your favorite actor?" And and usually they'd ask for a female and a male, and I would change up the male, whoever I would, you know. It was just a common question, but the female was always Emma Thompson. Yeah. And part of it was I thought she was brilliant, but I also had a bit of a crush on her. Yeah. My wife knows this. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I had a bit of a crush on her going back to like, you know, doing Beatrice and Much Ado About Nothing, all, the, all, all, the, all that. So when I got to set, they didn't tell me, it was a massive film, obviously, and, and they didn't really, they were keeping everything under wraps. Yeah. So I knew I had the script waiting for me, but I didn't know who I was working with. And I was given the impression I was working with the guys. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is great. I've always wanted to meet them. They seem cool. This will be fun. I'll be working with them. <laughs> and I get on set and Emma's there and I have to work with Emma. And all, <laughs> by the way, all of this got cut. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> scene. And we did like four or five different scenes, me and her. And they're little things. I'm an agent. I'm walking up. We're talking about space aliens. I don't remember what it was. Yeah. But um, I was so nervous with her. And I, I was like, why am I so nervous? I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I got dry mouth and I kept asking for water and I, I couldn't, I could barely, I couldn't, I couldn't find my breath and uh, it took me forever. And she just gave me, she was so nice, but she could tell I was really nervous around her and she was very, very sweet to me and very kind. <laughs> but I could also <laughs> get the sense it was like, who let this guy on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'd be so much better now, but here I built this woman up in my mind, you know, right. Yeah, and you weren't expecting to be working with her either, so yeah. that's... And yeah, I didn't think I'd be working with her. So um, that's my Emma Thompson story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really kind of glad it all got cut because I have a feeling it was awful. <laughs> Just looking well, like I'm, sure you, I'm sure you did better than you think you did. I mean, we, we all always think that we you know, were always on ourselves. It was Men in Black 3. They probably stuck an alien face on me. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't tell anyway. They were doing that with half the people there, so that's probably... Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what it was. Yeah. <laughs> well, as I mentioned earlier, you've been doing General Hospital mm -hmm. uh, off and on, and I love Huxley. Yeah, I, I do too. 
Um, so is it true that you prepped for this latest uh, run as Huxley by running lines to your kids? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I forgot I mentioned that. Yeah, I did because, uh, yeah, be because he's Huxley's such a character to begin with. And if you're trying to get a laugh out of your kid or entertain your kid, um, going with that over-the-top dialogue, it is over-the-top, I know. Um, <laughs> And just being over the top with with them is a really fun way to to sort of practice him, uh, <laughs> because he, he is written as this. He's not just he's not just your standard guy off the BBC uh, television. He's he's written as quite a quite a character. So yeah, uh, um, yeah, I did I did that's how I learned the lines was practicing with the toddlers. Did they give you any pointers? <laughs> yes. They said they said less is more, Dad. <laughs> okay, Dad has lost his mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why is that speaking in this strange accent? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I, w I would love to see you back on there as Huxley, though. I would, too. They keep leaving it open. Um, and I know that the last time I was around there with Steve, um, yeah. when he first came back, they they um, that was Jean Passanante, sort of, uh, who was a head writer at the time. That was sort of her swan song. And she said, I wrote that stuff for you. Yeah. And, and I was so... I was thrilled and honored that she did that. Um, but she they left it open, so who knows? I have no idea. Um, I didn't expect, yeah. the, the first phone call came out of left field. I didn't know, my agent yeah. said, do you want to go to General Hospital? I said, sure, <laughs> you know? And I had no yeah. idea what I was in store for. Yeah. You got to play opposite Maura the first time, and it, mm -hmm. and I loved seeing that. Obviously, anybody who watched World Turns loves seeing that. Yeah. But I gotta say, I would love to see more scenes with you and Steve Burton. I would too. There's just something about the two of you in a scene together. It's just I, I would love I would love for an expanded storyline involving the two of you. I would too. And Steve, it was very interesting with him because first of all, Steve did something that's incredibly difficult to do as an actor is he is a great listener, and he had yeah. to listen because I just ran my mouth on every <laughs> yeah. for like twenty minutes at a, at a clip, and it's very hard. It's a skill and it's a talent to be able to listen the way he listens. Um, but he was also refining this character. He goes, you know, I haven't played this guy in, in years and I've been playing right. someone else. And now I'm coming back to this person. So he was sort of making these discoveries about this guy that he had played and sort of sharing some of that with me. And so it was, it was very alive. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of stuff happening. It wasn't just like showing up and doing your nine to five job. It was us exploring things together and I loved it. Uh, and he's also a really nice guy. So I would love to work with him again. Yeah, I, I can see him using Huxley as like a, I don't know, trying to get information out of a like a rival mob family or something, and and be, him being thrown into like this dangerous situation and having to babble his way through it or something. You know, I'll end up in a dress. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, you just at some point carry I'll on the tradition from World Turns. <laughs> yeah, at some point. At some point. <laughs> Well, um, let's see. What was like? Okay, yeah, we mentioned your kids. You're running lines with them, and I wanted to ask you about how you and your wife met. You met through Match.com. It works. It works. Internet. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Get this. I, there's some creeps out there because um, obviously you know there's some creeps out there. Yeah. <laughs> I was her. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> A lot of wisdom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she had been on Match, and I was her 50th date, which, oh right. And the vast majority, them, vast majority of them just did not, you know, obviously just it didn't go anywhere. She was my first. And so I- That's not hardly fair. <laughs> not fair. And it just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> not fair. But she told me some horror stories um, out there. So I wouldn't, I, I'm not saying that this is the answer for everybody. It was for me. <laughs> it was great for me. Yeah. Uh, I knocked it out of the park on the first swing. Right. But, um, <laughs> but, um, but that's not true for everyone. I, yeah. I, and I don't know, there's all these other apps. Oh God, I sound old, but there's all these other apps now that I don't know anything about that seem to be less designed for romance. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Yeah, uh, I would say that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we, if you find, if you're looking for a relationship like we both were, you're you're gonna you're gonna find that person on, on yeah. these this site. You know, the person is like, I'm I'm I, I don't want to just sit here and give you my resume. I don't want to just jump into bed with you. I really want to have like a Let's build right, something. Connection. That's, yeah, a quality connection. Yeah. That worked, worked. And we're very different people. It wasn't like we were like, 
checking off boxes like we like the same this and the same that. We're very yeah. different. Which, yeah, she's a she's a lawyer. Is that right? She is. She's an attorney. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm married above my my pay grade. Definitely. You, you could you probably couldn't find more opposite. You know, you'd think so, but when she's yeah. in court and she gets to go up there and 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 go, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let me tell you why this you know this horrible person is yeah. in jail. It's a lot of acting involved. There's a lot of convincing and persuasion involved. So right, There's yeah, some similarities. Yeah, yeah. I, when you when you put it that way, there there are some similarities. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's it, her part though, 50 dates. I mean, 50 different. Uh, yeah, I know. She was I about to. I don't think that's unusual. I, I think that's, I think that's, it's pretty. Probably I, more unusual that you meet the woman, woman you're going to marry on the first try. Exactly. <laughs> you're I, I got, yeah, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the weirdo in this situation. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Well, you, you definitely lucked up, I would say then, that you, you didn't have to go through 50 people. No. 50 nightmare stories. No, like she had to take a risk too, because I was on the I was on world turns at the time, right. so I couldn't put I didn't want to put my face on you know you're supposed to look at a profile right. picture right. I don't want to do that because I, I I didn't want to go down that route so there's this picture of me from like far away <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm like in Thailand somewhere like a Buddhist Wat you have no <laughs> idea who this person is and she somehow she she said okay I'll give this guy a shot. <laughs> so, why not? You know, after yeah, after forty nine others, then why not? And she was yeah. about to quit, right? She was about to quit the online dating thing at yeah, that she point. Was. She was about to quit it. In fact, she wasn't going to show up for this day. Uh, oh wow! Unfortunately, my sister in law and her great wisdom convinced her. Oh, you never know. This could be the one. Apparently, that's what she said, and, uh, uh, and it worked out. Isn't that great? That is, that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. That's a really cool story because it's just everything kind of lined up just right. Yeah. Yeah, it was raining too. It was uh, everything. It was it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the F. The F. Your new film. Yeah, it's based off of a play that you wrote and directed. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, what is what is the F about? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. It started off as is. Uh, uh, I wanted to explore what happens when a couple's having an argument. Mm -hmm. And one person accuses the other person of doing something, and this person's absolutely sure that they're right. But you start to lose that sense of whether you're right or wrong because you love the other person. So in this yes. case, the woman is accusing her boyfriend of, of infidelity, and she's absolutely certain that he's cheated. But along the way, uh, she gets tripped up, and she starts to lose her self-confidence and lose her ability to make that accusation and really believe in it. And so it's all about the power struggle of someone's winning and someone's losing and then someone's winning and someone's losing. And in the middle of it, it gets funny. Even when you're yelling at each other, yeah, we'll start to make jokes and, and go, what does that mean? And, 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 and in this case, this, this, this woman is not very good with language. She's very smart, but mm -hmm. she's not good with idioms. So she'll say things like, um, you know, uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you go off and run off with your head between your legs? <laughs> but she yeah. said, head between your legs, <laughs> and and this is a recurring theme throughout, <laughs> throughout the script. So oh, good, I'm glad you laughed. I'm hoping other people. Yeah. Will. Um, and 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 uh, and because of this, because she has this liability, uh, it makes her vulnerable. Yeah. She thinks she's stupid, and yeah. if she thinks she's stupid, then she could be wrong about this whole thing. And maybe he really does love her, and he's not cheating at all. So I'm hoping the audience can't tell. I'm hoping at the end they're not sure if he did or didn't. Yeah. Um, and that, that's what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. So what What made you want to make it into a film? Because we, when we did the play, people said, why don't you make this into a film? Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I, I really, yeah, I've written it as a play and then people said, try to make this as a film. And they're like, well, that should be easy. It takes place in a subway and I live in New York, so I can put this in a subway. Well, filming in a subway in, in August. New York. Uh, guess what? It's a pain. It's a real pain. <laughs> I was going to say it probably is a real pain. It's really <laughs> challenging. Um, but we pulled it off. We got we got most of it in. We're still working. We're still doing. We're still fundraising for it. We're still doing because there's a lot of post stuff that has to be done. Um, yeah. And then we're going to put it out on the festivals, festival circuit, and do the whole nine yards, Sundance and South by Southwest and everything else. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So, so you are in fact still accepting. Oh yeah, absolutely. Go to GoFundMe and 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 sign about the F. Look for yeah. the. Um, I just looked at it and looked up the F and all of the F. Anything that has F in it usually has an expletive after it. Yeah. <laughs> and followed by no, but it's good. It's followed by cancer. So everyone's saying, "Stop effing cancer! Stop Susie's effing cancer!" 
John, you can beat this effing cancer. I'll like go find me. So I'm just the F. There's no cancer just involved. The F. <laughs> yeah, just the I'll, F. I'll put a link up to uh, the GoFundMe page. That would be awesome. After the, yeah. After the interview. Yeah, after we finish. Personal thank you letter from me and 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 that sort of thing. Um, yeah, we're still we're still raising money. So if anyone wants to do that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think you've raised about forty five hundred dollars. Um, so yeah, far on, so on the GoFundMe. Yeah. On the GoFundMe, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and I think most, it looked like most of the lower level perks had already been claimed. Um, but you can still get, let's say for $500, you can get your name in the credits under special right. thanks. Yeah. And for a thousand dollars, you can get an executive producer credit on right. IMDb. So that's, and someone did this and they're going to be executive producer and it goes into IMDb and the whole nine. Yeah. The whole nine yards. Yeah. So you're technically an executive producer. So yeah, you're, if you're feeling the love and also right. <laughs> part of the movie magic, come on, come join yeah. me. <laughs> there's well, a line, in, there's a line in the film that a woman says life is short. And so, uh, yeah, life is short. Come, come support the F. It, it sounds like it's going to be a great film. Uh, it's, I, was, I mean, it's like a great concept. I was doing some editing today, and uh, it looks great. My actors are great, and um, I think it is going to be good. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it, but I think it's going to be pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited. Well, Trent, that was pretty much all of my questions. Unless you have something you would like to add before we go. No. Um, uh, Do you want to talk about toddler poop anymore? Or? <laughs> I, man, I don't think I can talk about toddler poop anymore. <laughs> it's just poop all day, every day. <laughs> oh my God. And my, I have a little girl who's just turned 19 months today and they say girls develop faster than boys with these sorts of things. And oh, she's, wow. already, she's already telling us like, I got a poop coming. I'm like, That's great. <laughs> she's really on it. She's on it. My boy, yeah. my boy's almost three and a half and uh, it's still a mystery. It's still, <laughs> he's taking his own sweet time getting this. He really what are, what are their names? Jack and Emma. Uh, and Jack and Emma. Oh, I love those names. My grandmother's name was Emma. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a classic name. I also named her after my crush, you know, Emma Thompson. So. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, I think that's it. I think it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank well, you. It was a pleasure talking to you too. I hope you come back. Actually, you have been on my short list of people that I've wanted to interview for a while and you did not disappoint. So okay. <laughs> oh great. Good. Good good good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but please please come back on anytime and keep us updated on how you're doing with the the crowdfunding with the film. I will. I, I mean I'll chat and email with you and, and and let you know how that's coming along. If you post something that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll post links too so and I'll share that with the audience. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank good. you again. You have a good rest of your night. You too. Take care. Good night. All right. Good night.